electricity is one of the most useful things that we harvest and we use to do almost everything. Electricity allows us to turn off, turn on the lights whenever we want. It allows me to charge this camcorder so that the battery can be used to do this video. It allows me to charge my phone and, you know, look through apps and check out stuff, check out my favorite apps and stuff. So, it is amazing. And with know-how electricity is produced in a power plant where you burn stuff or you undergo nuclear fission and you use all those heat energy that has been produced by uh, burning or the nuclear fission reaction, chain reaction, and we use it to turn water to steam and that steam will turn a turbine an uh, electromagnetic turbine that serves as a generator to produce electrical energy. And electricity is then passed through a wire cable, one of those big old wire cables that you see out on the highway, right? And these big cable wires are insulated by ceramic or plastic materials, right? Even in the wires that we see at home, behind the walls, that connects to all our plugs that we use. Cable wires are insulated by ceramic and plastic materials because these are good chemical or electrical insulators. I mean, they are good electrical insulators. That means electricity will not just simply go away and leave into, um, I guess, space not real space, okay, just like uh, the environment. And in the outer coating of the insulator, you will have uh, copper or aluminum, small aluminum or small copper wires that are twirled and twined around the cable. So you will see that the wires are twirled and twirled, twirled around. That is to add strength and to, and you have a lot of it of this copper and aluminum wires and is a great electrical conductor because of its delocalized and amount of delocalized electrons in those uh, metallic bonds. Okay, uh, and usually one of those huge co uh, cable wires that you see on, on the highway, usually in the middle of the uh, aluminum or copper wire, you will see a steel core in the middle of the wire cable. And that steel core does not conduct electricity. What it does is that it provides support for the wires from sagging too much. So it allows it to just be, you know, tied to one end to, to another big pole to another big pole without letting the wires sag too much. All right. At home, um, our wires have no steel core because there really isn't a need for it because it's usually just laid out, you know, and stuck behind walls and stuff. So it's not like it's going to go anywhere. So when we receive the, uh, this electricity at homes, we can use it to power our batteries, like I said before. And once the battery is charged, the battery is now has a lot of chemical energy and is converting those chemical energy into electrical energy. And this process is called electrochemistry. And when uh, industry, manufacturing industry receive this, uh, these electricity, they use it for all kinds of chemical reactions that are non-spontaneous and through a process called electrolysis. So electrolysis is basically taking this electrical energy that is from all these power plants and they use it to force a chemical reaction to take place and the products of the chemical reactions are used and collected and sold and packaged and whatever they want to do with it. Okay? So that's electricity and chemistry. 
the two major differences there are that one is called electrochemistry and the other is called electrolysis. Electrochemistry is a process where you convert chemical energy to electrical energy. And these substances, these chemicals, when you mix them together, they will spontaneously react. And when they react, the electrons are being transferred from one uh, substance to another substance. And when it's transferred, we can harvest that electrons to do work in electrol electrol electrolysis. What is, that, what is needed is that we need a power source, and that power source will jolt substances that otherwise when you mix them on its own, it wouldn't react. So when you introduce electrical energy into it, you jolt it, you'll have enough energy in the system to undergo chemical reactions, and the products of those chemical reactions are then collected, harvested, sold, packaged, or do something wrong with it. And an important point about electroly electrolysis is that these chemical reactions are non spontaneous by itself, so you need a power source. Okay, so in, 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 and in an electrochemical cell, what you have, you see online, when you do your research online, what you will see is that you have this will be a typical cell. You have two beakers filled with molten liquid solution of some sort, and you have electrodes. These electrodes can be platinum and copper, usually copper in the classroom, and I mean, not copper, carbon in the classroom, and what you have is a conductor, usually a copper one. All right, so when you mix the thing together, reaction is gonna happen spontaneously, and then electrodes, uh, electrons are gonna go from one end to the other end, and between the two cells, uh, two mini uh, beakers, there's a salt bridge. And this salt bridge is kind of like an ion selector where it allows specific ions to pass through the salt bridge while not letting other ions to go through. So it's very selective, all right? And in an electrolytic cell, what you have is everything is in one beaker, this beaker is made of molten liquid, whatever it may be, and um, on an ionic solution of some sort. You have electrodes again. These electrodes are usually uh, platinum and carbon because they're inert, that means they're not active. And sometimes it's copper, copper electrodes for if you want to do electroplating. We'll talk about that next time. And you also have a conductor wire, a copper wire, and then those copper wires connected to a power source need this power source in order for this reaction to start to occur, all right? Next time, what we do is we'll look at electrolysis in more detail because this is where our syllabus is focused on, and we'll look at how a typical electrolytic cell is structured and how things are done when you turn on the power.